and my name is Elena Jenkins. I'm a middle school girl, small group leader down here at the warehouse and on Wednesday nights. And if you don't mind, I kind of want to hop right into it because we're going to need every chunk of 15 minutes. And uh, I want to read to you a quote uh, that was written by a Christian about a year ago, uh, going through a really rough patch. And uh, it's pretty raw. It's pretty honest. So I'd like to read that to you today to kind of kick things off to where we're going. It says, so where does this leave me? The truth is, I don't really know. All I know is right now, things aren't getting better. I feel like any progress I made is quickly fading. I want to ask for help, but the truth is, I don't really know how. I want to improve, but I don't have the willpower to do it. I feel like I was thrown in the ocean with the waves crashing over, and I barely know how to swim. But if I look like I can, then I must know how, right? So everyone assumes I'm okay, and my silent cries for help are presumed as a joke, when in reality, all I need is someone to come save me and recognize that really, I'm drowning. Guys, that struggling Christian, oh no, that was me a year ago. Now I'm on the floor. That was me a year ago. And if you know me, you probably aren't expecting this, but I'm here today to share with you two main things. And the first one is most importantly how Jesus Christ transformed my life. But the second one is how he did that through my battle with depression. So for some context, uh, I became a Christian at 16 years old. Uh, I grew up in a house that didn't really take faith all too seriously. And it all began when my good friend Kira uh, invited me back here to the warehouse after I had been gone for years and convinced me on the very last night of signups to go on the winter retreat. And it absolutely changed and transformed my life forever. That first night, Pastor JD gave a message on feeling caged, feeling stuck by something. And it really spoke to me. And that night, I gave my life to Jesus, that very first night. That summer, I went to vertical camp where this happened. And I got baptized. Uh, so the picture on the right is obviously me getting baptized. On the left, in the middle, is one of my small group leaders, Anna Collins, who I still talk to uh, very often. And all the way on the left in the purple is that friend, Kira who uh, brought me back to Christ, and I'm forever thankful for that friendship. After I gave my life to Jesus, every part of me changed. How I spoke, what I watched, the choices I made, who I hung out with, everything. If it was with me pre-Jesus, the likelihood is it wasn't probably a part of me after I gave my life to Christ. And I was on what I call the faith high. Like, have you guys ever experienced this where you go to vertical camp and you come back and you kind of feel like unstoppable? Like, if there was a if there was a building on fire and Jesus was like, run in, like you'd run in. Like you're on that faith high between camps and mission trips. I felt like there was nothing stopping me. And I rode that high all the way to graduation. And the transition I wasn't ready for, which some of you were about to approach, wasn't high school to college. It was being in student ministry to not really being anywhere, not really having that label. And I graduated here from the warehouse and every struggle that life could probably throw my way, throw my way was thrown. Now, I know you're probably thinking something similar. Uh, if you don't really know me, and it's kind of probably something along the lines of like, Elena, like, where's this whole depression thing come into play? Because like, you seem pretty happy, and this seems pretty happy, and like, I'm kind of confused. And if you're thinking that, then Elena Jenkins from a year ago would be thrilled. Because my greatest downfall started right where my biggest smile began. In October of 2021, not that long ago, I lost interest in everything. Wasn't going to practices, wasn't going to school. I wasn't as dedicated here as I should have been. I was giving up. And I didn't know it then, but looking back on it now, I know that I was in the early stages of a pretty intense battle with depression. So I did the only thing that Elena Jenkins knows how to do, at least at the time, and I faked my happiness. And I walked into every door, especially these ones, with a fake smile, cracking a joke, and answering, great, how are you, to every question that was thrown my way. And as the pain grew deeper, the smile grew wider, when in reality, I would go home most nights, and I would beg God that it would be my last. Because inside of me was so much crippling pain. There's this quote by Robin Williams, and it says, all it takes is a beautiful fake smile to hide an injured soul, and they will never notice how broken you really are. And unfortunately, this quickly became my life motto just last year. At this point, my relationship with God was weak. My Bible was dusty. My prayer life didn't really exist. And something I will never, ever forget is one night looking myself in the mirror in my bedroom and saying, Elena, God regrets saving you. 
He regrets your salvation. Like, look at you. Like, he doesn't want you. That very same night, I would wait for everybody in my house to go to sleep. And I would walk downstairs, and I'd begin hurting myself intentionally over and over and over again for months, telling nobody. Because I believed that nobody wanted me, nobody loved me, it wasn't important. And it wasn't until months later that I finally cracked. I was in my friend Savannah's car, and we're just sitting there, we're talking, and all of a sudden, I broke down. I'm just talking to him, I'm like, hey, I, I, I'm struggling, I need help. I'm like, if you don't help me, if you don't help me get, get the help I need, I'm not gonna be here to see my 20th birthday, I just know it. And more than one time, I considered ending my life. And that night, I remember, I went home and I prayed genuinely for the first time in a while, because she noticed. Someone noticed that pain, and I felt like those half-hearted prayers to God were answered. What happened after that? Well, people started noticing my pain. And they began picking up their shovels and helping me dig myself out of the depression pit that almost stole my life. And what jump-started that was uh, one night when two people who I admire very, very much, um, who if I end up anything like them, I will be eternally grateful. They looked me in the eyes and they said, hey, you're not okay. Uh, we're going to come pick you up and we're going to talk about it. And don't try to lie your way out of it because it's not going to work. <laughs> I didn't. Um, do these guys look familiar to you? This is uh, Daphne Ziegler and Don Lichty. They're leaders here at the warehouse. Um, they're, they're two of my biggest role models. And uh, that night, the three of us learned something very valuable. And that was that church is not the only place you worship Jesus. Because in that car that night, we laughed and we cried and we prayed together. And when I got dropped off that night, for the first time in months, I cried tears of relief. Because someone was noticing my pain. Jesus, uh, he had a half-brother, James, and in James 5.16, he writes, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. That night, I did have a lot of confessing to do, but I also had a lot of pain to confess to, a lot of pain to own to some people who really loved me. And in doing so, I found hope, and I found healing, and I found strength that God was trying to give me for, for months, and I just wasn't accepting it. Now, as I was preparing to speak with you guys tonight, I was trying to find a better way to illustrate my story. And I realized something pretty cool that our, our lives and our walk with Jesus is similar to this Jenga tower. When you first give your life to Christ, just stick with me here, all right? You feel whole. You feel complete. Yeah, maybe you're not super stable yet, but you'll get there because Christ is now in your life. But as you journey on, you begin to feel like holes are poked in your life, holes are poked in your faith. And for me, I, I felt that. And there were holes of isolation. The days that would be really, really bad are the days I would hide away the most, not come to church. For me, there were holes of, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just tired. Well, yeah, I was tired because I'm probably going on night three or four with no sleep because I would wake up in the middle of the night and contemplate why I was still there. For me, There were holes of self-harm, cutting, making myself hurt because, like I said, I didn't even think Jesus loved me. Guys, like this tower, we all have that moment. The straw that broke the camel's back, we feel that we're so unsteady and we feel like we're going to collapse. And I had that moment. In March of 2022, almost a year ago, I went out with some friends for what I thought would be such a fun night. That night, I was turned into a victim of sexual assault when someone couldn't respect my word no, didn't respect my boundaries. And that night, I collapsed. Guys, when I was in the peak of that depression, that would have killed me. That collapse would have been the end. But as you can clearly see, it wasn't. And that's because I learned not to face my battles alone, not to hide away when I was in pain, but the church was the place to come when I was in pain. That I need to face them with my problems with help, but most importantly, I need to face them with my God. Guys, if you know me, you probably know that one of my favorite verses 
is Jesus wept. And that's because if you think about it, you take Jesus, the son of man, the one we bow down to, the one we raise our hands and worship to, the one we pray to, he cried. He had feelings, and just like us, he was human. And I began to realize that if Jesus could weep so unashamed, so unapologetically, he just let it out, then why aren't I? Guys, when we're suffering, sometimes we feel like we're traveling through this really long valley with no mountaintop in sight. There's this verse in Romans that I like to remind myself of when I'm thinking about this. It's Romans 5, 3 through 5. And it says, not only so, but we also find glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Guys, these past couple years, especially this last year, I've gone through some really, really hard times. Some of that with Jesus, some of it without him. But as I look back, I can see that God was there all along, helping me, healing me. Because the darkness that I faced in my life is nothing compared to the extremely bright plans he has for my future. Guys, if you get nothing out of my story tonight, that's fine. But please leave with this. Jesus does not leave you in that pain. He doesn't leave you stuck there. In fact, he walks through it with you. He holds your hand. He holds you. And he says, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. Guys, you can choose to walk away from Christ in that time of your life. That's fine. But when you do that, you're only removing your last source of genuine, eternal hope. All you need to do is slowly start to pick up these pieces and hand them to him. And he's going to begin rebuilding what this life broke. Guys, the love of Jesus pulled me back from some really, really hard times. And he can do the same for you. But you have to let him. Because one day, one day you're going to find yourself whole again. Maybe you're not going to be as sturdy as you once was, but you'll get there. So today, please hear me. Please hear my heart on this. That if you're struggling, if you're hurting, maybe you're not hurting now, but you will one day. I can assure you the Bible promises that. Please remember that Jesus did not bring you this far to only bring you this far. Let's pray. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for bringing all these incredible people here, all these leaders here. God, I pray that uh, today that these were just your words speaking through me, not me. God, I pray that every person leaves here today uh, feeling encouraged. But God, most importantly, I feel I hope they leave here today with a uh, love of you in their heart and that they leave here today feeling a little bit closer to you. God, we love you. It's your name we pray. Amen.